Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. And today we're going to have a conversation in the afterlife with Naomi Judd. I know, I know it can be extraordinarily difficult, especially when there are mental health issues around someone's death. And the topic, of course, is sensitive about her choice to end her life. I know that there are going to be potentially a lot of triggers here in this particular conversation. And I want to mention if these topics around suicide and suicide prevention or end of life or mental health, the severity of which you maybe personally have felt or dealt with in your life, just know that there's a lot of energy of respect for which this conversation is held in. I will be straightforward and deliver the messages and the information that comes through to the best of my ability. While I have compassion for you as the viewer and the words that are chosen or how this message may land or, or receive, please know that I will just do my best to share directly the translation of the energetics that come through when we speak with Naomi Judd in the afterlife. And maybe if you've recently lost someone, um, to a suicide that has been completed, this might be too raw for you potentially just because of the energetics. However, there could also be a lot of healing energy here because I feel Archangel Raphael very present, Archangel Metatron very present. Metatron is my energetic chiropractor, helps to realign your energy, kind of put you back into place after you've kind of maybe fallen apart or had some challenges. And then Raphael is a beautiful energetic green light of healing energy that hold that heart as a sacred space. I also see the energy of Archangel Gabriel coming in that connects you to your spirit, to the voice within and your intuition. So I'm asking you as a viewer to use your own intuition and your best judgment. If you are in a state where you are or have contemplated or have suicidal ideation or contemplation, I would highly recommend that you just reach out to a friend, a family member, or to one of the anonymous support lines that you can reach. There's a crisis connection hotlines available at your fingertips 24 seven. All it takes is a Google search. Okay. All right. I am not a counselor nor a therapist, and I don't have any desire to prevent you from feeling a certain way about this topic. And at the same time, I want to empower you to recognize truly what a gift life is. All right. Every life matters. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's get started, shall we? Naomi comes in and she's talking to me about looks. The energy, she's making me feel like there's very specific face or a mask you have to wear. And she says it gets tiring. It gets really exhausting after a while. This kind of drive to stay youthful, this drive to stay in a state where other people, people will compare you. She's sharing people compare you to who you are now, to who you were years ago. And she says, I was a young mother and I have a, a younger kind of vibe, she says, with my, with my girls, and my kids are, are, are very, very important to me, yet at the same time, I, she's like talking about her youth not being what she anticipated or expected it would be, and she's not complaining, but she's really, really a lot of self-reflection about who she was, how important beauty was, how important body image. She's giving me this energy vibe a little, you guys. Okay, it's could be trigger. I'm just gonna share body. People who have body issues, who have challenged, have challenges with their body and self-image issues about their body, about your body, or eating things, eating disorders or eating um, challenges. She is showing me what looks to be a, like a body dysmorphia a bit. So I'm gonna share that with you. And a little bit of like this bulimia, anorexia, bulimia, anorexia, kind of binging, kind of balancing. But I don't know if that, that's her or if it's her, one of her daughters. But she's showing me this like, and she's 
getting it kind of cored back to, it's attached back to women and the demands on women and the unfair, unrealistic expectations of women to stay a certain age and freeze your face in time and it does not work. She says, it doesn't work. You gotta find happiness in the cracks in between. And she's like, the wrinkle lines. You gotta find happiness in the cracks in between. She actually has a good sense of humor. It's pretty Southern to me. So, and I'm Midwestern, so I might not get <laughs> some of her references. Some of you will feel her vibes. She's not using any of this information that initially comes in as excuse or anything like that. It's just, she's trying to, I think, articulate some of the big core themes of her mind is what she's saying, my mind. So did you struggle or battle with mental illness? Yes, and she's not also saying addiction. And it looks like pills or something, like maybe sleeping pills or something or diet pills or something, there's pills. I do see alcohol also involved. It looks clear though, like a gin or a vodka. Is gin light? I don't know. See, that's how much I do not drink, people. Um, I drink I drink a little bit. I'll have a glass of wine and stuff and have some fun drinks, but I don't know, hard, hard alcohol. I don't know. I have no clue, but it's light colored like a vodka. I know what that looks like. I think gin is light too. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, she's showing me taking, like, she's showing me headaches. Like her head is aching, it hurts. It really hurts and I'm not sure, it, it looks like a physical body thing, like physical body pain in the head. Um, it's almost like terminal, like she's making me feel like there's a terminal illness and it's like in the head, in the head. And I don't know if it's actually physical, it feels so physical, but I don't know that it is. It literally, she's showing, like I am actually feeling on the left side of my head, this pounding headache. Hmm. I don't know much about, um, oh boy. I, I don't know much about her passing, except that I do know that she used a gun to complete suicide. Uh, I think I just figured out how. <sighs> she's pretty matter of fact, actually. She's pretty matter of fact. She's like, it's not pretty. So I'm pretty. She's, she's sharing with me like this waiting to die feeling. Her physical body must have had an illness or something. There's gotta be something because she's sharing with me like her body isn't right. Like it's tight and it's not right. Her mind isn't right, but her body is not cooperative. And I'm not sure if that's figurative, like in a way of like, I wanna stay youthful and young and vibrant and, and relevant. Or it's not, it's not conceited, it's not vain, you guys. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like a very real practical energy here. And her body feels tight or tense. And it's not shaking, but it feels just really rigid is what it feels like to me. And maybe she felt super like a prisoner of her body. Maybe she didn't feel good in her body. Maybe it was that intense for her that it's really a mental thing. But I feel like there's some physical stuff going on here. That's how it feels. Um, and then she says to me, I wanted to make sure someone else was there. Um, I mean, she wasn't alone. I know that she wasn't alone, but there's somebody else besides family that was there. I see that. So that's interesting, unfortunately. Um, she's saying something about grandkids or grandchildren too. Now she's like switching gears and she's focusing on the next generation or the going on, the moving on. You got to move on. You got to move on. Winona is the one that feels, I see pills and alcohol with her too. Is she, I don't know if she's recovering. Is she in recovery? She might be. Um, there's, there's a lot of confliction or confusion within her field. I'm going to share um, with a Naomi, Naomi Judd within her field. Like, I don't think, I think this was a spontaneous thing. I think this was um, something that came in and out of her consciousness that she considered multiple times. 
it looks like three too. So I don't know if there were three attempts at suicide over her lifetime, or if she's trying to convince somebody else to help her die or what the deal was. Um, <clears throat> yeah, she keeps saying like, there's things, there's references to being old and decrepit, old and decrepit and like a burden and like just so like crabby because she's just so unhappy, so unhappy, so unhappy is how it feels. It's how it feels. I want to pull her out of this huge, thick, depressed energy because I want to be able to talk to her and pull some glimmers of light out. Is there an archangel that can help out here? Because she feels low energetically still. Is there, is there a purpose for that? So that she's relatable, Bridget. I just heard that out loud. Archangel Gabriel, who's one of my great friends in the afterlife energetics for spirit guide stuff and helps with communication and connections. Thank you, Gabriel. Very yellow intuition, solar plexus energy. And Gabriel says, uh, she wants to be relatable and relevant. And this is, she, he says, there's not a lot of people who... She says this, okay. She kind of pushes him out of the way. She says, this is something that might actually help somebody. These feelings might actually help somebody. The way you're communicating my presence, how I'm showing up in spirit might actually help somebody else. I haven't, um, I haven't been personally, um, have I, in, uh, impacted by suicide? Oh, don't say that, please. It's like a not yet kind of vibe. Um, I have had, I have done readings for people who's, who have lost a loved one due to suicide. And I have, I know people in my family have friends and families they're connected to that have experienced the loss by suicide. It's definitely a trauma that is hard to understand. And there's a ton of grief around that. And that's kind of, Naomi, that's kind of how I'm feeling you. I feel a lot of grief around you. Not the traditional grief as in, loss, um, missing my loved ones, but grief as in, is there regret? Do you have regret? <laughs> yes, she says. <laughs> oh, okay. Now we're getting somewhere, people. That's what the depressed energy is, is regret. It is regret. As to the how, specifically, she's saying as to the how. Not to the thoughts of wanting to die, but to the how, but to the way that she did that. God, my head is killing me on the left side. It just hurts all of a sudden. Again. Can we please stop focusing on this? She's showing me images for like that look like old school family portraits. Do you remember those old school family portraits where they kind of just had the picture of somebody and then they kind of kind of faded out on the, the portraits, you know? It was kind of like a gray or brown background. It kind of just faded out. And it was kind of like this oval with the family in it. And I see that. Did she have a baby that died? Because I see a baby in the afterlife. There's an infant in the afterlife. Okay, so she's, there's been a couple names that she's mentioned, Glenn and Roger. I think there might be a movie about her life, isn't there? Is there already one out? Because it feels like there is a movie about her life. Does anybody know that? Um, there's a, I think I see an energy of, I see the sign, a sign that says Nashville. I've never been to Nashville. I've seen a sign that says Nashville. And then I see this kind of um, allure to Memphis, which feels more like Graceland or Elvis. So I don't know if my only Jed knew Elvis or what the deal was with that, but I feel like this little bit of a tie-in with Graceland, uh, with Memphis. Maybe they had, they might've recorded at the summer studio. Does anybody know that? If you're a fan, check it out. 
tell me, <laughs> tell me. I'm in channeling. If you're new to Above Life Channel, my name's Bridget. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm a psychic medium. I'm also an intuitive life coach. And I don't Google stuff or find stuff out before I channel. I actually channel raw, like just pure organically. Okay, so that's why it's a dialogue. This is not TMZ. Okay, so there's gotta be a connection because I can feel it. <laughs> um, I'm seeing Ashley too. I see Ashley Chuck. Something about her leg, her knee and her leg or something. Does she have to have like pins in her knee or her leg? See that? And then I see, um, I see a Frank also. Who the heck is Frank? Is this character? These could be characters on, on movies. Naomi feels like an actress too. Like she could act or has been in something as cameo. Has she? Um, then I see like Grand Old Opry. Oh my gosh, I've never been there. But I see that. So if you're a mega fan, you know stuff about this. I don't know. Forgive me. I haven't been a huge country fan or a huge like the Judds kind of fan. I just have. I just haven't. I'm kind of getting a little bit of a. Oh, some of you might not like this, but a little bit of a. Um, Liza Minnelli's mom vibe. Mm. Judy Garland vibe. Judy and Liza vibe. I, 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 I think that the mother-daughter relationships have been a bit turbulent. That's what we'll say. Which most are, let's be honest. Everybody has problems, people. They're just amplified when you're in the public eye, apparently. She's really annoyed about the gossip stuff and about um, the inferences about how like other people should have known and she shouldn't have been alone and all this stuff. That's really annoying to her. She just doesn't have time for that. She's like, I just don't have time for that. I don't have time for the nitpicking or the, the people behind the scenes, the, the people that think they know me or they know my family. They don't know. They don't know. They have no idea. They have no idea. No idea. No idea. But I do feel this competitive, I don't want to say competitive, comparison. Hmm. I'm not sure. Some kind of vibe there going on. I can feel there's not rest here. There's not a peaceful vibe or a, hey, let's teach you all about life through, unfortunately, this choice that she made and the decision she made, that kind of thing. I don't feel like that. I feel more like the energy of the, the decision that she made to end her life was, is now in the afterlife, this feeling like there is regret. And it feels about the how. And okay, so this might be controversial, but I'm gonna say it. I wonder if the meds are off because there's a level of medication or something that doesn't feel right in the body. So I don't know if it's her hormones that are off, if that's a bipolar thing, or if that's a, a, a personality disorder thing, or if that's literally just, I don't think it's personality disorder, but her brain is not right. It almost looks like um, dementia or Alzheimer's meds or something that's all confusing in a cocktail and not, not right or a depression med with something else and something else. And it's not the cocktail of the three. There's three different kinds of medications. It feels, here's the three again. And it feels like it's not right. I'm not suggesting that anybody was malice or, or I'm sorry, I'm not practice or anything like that. I'm just saying that just something's, it feels like um, that brought her down to the point where she had to decide to do that. And it could be her physical body pain was just so much that she couldn't handle it. She's just done with it, ready to be done, just need to be done now, done now, done now. And people were not listening to her. And by people, I mean, maybe her healthcare providers or they were just chalking it up to, well, she's getting older or she has this tension in her body, her entire body, like a fibromyalgia or something kind of like, but more rigid, like an MS fibromyalgia combination. I have no idea what that is. It's not Parkinson's, she's not shaky. I don't see that but it's definitely um, almost like a stroke-like thing that almost paral paralyzes part of you, but it causes great pain in other parts of you. It almost feels like that kind of, I'm not saying that that's what she's had, but I'm just saying it feels confusing. The medical piece of her situation feels confusing. And so it would make sense that the meds would not be right or accurate. And so she just needed more time to get that kind of leveled all or balanced out. But I don't think she wanted to be here. She did not want to be here. She wanted to be out, out, out. She wanted to be out five, seven years ago. And she's not out. She wanted to be out 10 years ago. She's not out. She wanted to be out when she was more in her prime and stuff is the vibe I get. And I get this feeling of her looking at herself, her younger self, and she doesn't like where she's at. That's how we feel. I, 
I was kind of hoping this would be a little more inspirational and uplifting, but what I think some of the takeaways are here is the Archangels coming in for all of us to wrap us in an energy with Archangel Michael healing, Archangel Metatron alignment, which brings your mind, your heart, your soul, and your body together so that you can make just really solid decisions for yourself. So it's not an impulsive scenario, which is really what this feels like. It feels like thoughts that all of a sudden there was a window of opportunity and it was impulsive to go like jump, you know, now, now, you know, like no pause, no pause, no, it's just, it's challenging to, I know, contemplate this, especially with the famous person in a situation where it feels like she was very loved and supported, but there's a lot of inner turmoil here and a lot of stuff that we can't even comprehend that happened to her in her lifetime. Like I do see um, being the victim of a violent, um, like being victim of violence and almost, I don't know if it's domestic violence, domestic violence or domestic assault or rape, I think it's intense, whatever it is, and there's multiple episodes and incidences. That is not cool stuff. That is very, very, that's not like light stuff that you can just kind of blow, pull off off. I mean, there's a lot of trauma here for her. So I want to really respect the energy that she has shown up with to share and not to present this, oh yeah, I'm so fine now because now I'm dead, everything's good. No, but also if you love her, don't worry about her because she's on a path now. She's in the afterlife now. Her soul can evolve and grow, and you can do that in the afterlife. You can. The connection to the archangels like Raphael for healing and Metatron for alignment, to be able to really understand the depth of the value of life itself and the essence of, of the connection that we are to source and the peace of source and the light that we are as individuals when we incarnate into a body. And then in addition to that, we have Gabriel who helps us understand more deeply and broadly connection and communication, which Gabriel can serve to connect you. Gabriel also is an archangel that shows up as very feminine as for mothers and children. So what, what Naomi is showing me is her grandkids. Like I'm feeling an, a nod to grandkids and I feel a boy, a little boy. And I'm also feeling like she may have lost a baby because there's a baby in the afterlife and I can see it. I can see it. And have they done active? And I see animals too. Like she must love animals. And then I also see some activism pieces around them. So don't be surprised if they create her, her kids, her family creates a foundation in her honor or something like that. And don't be surprised if it's for youth or, or for musicians or for artists or things like that. Um, because it feels like there's a lot of intensity and stress that comes through in mental illness that comes through as a result of trying to share your purpose, trying to share your gifts and talents with the world. And those things can be feel desperate and they can be mistreated and misused and abused, but they can also be released and shared and, and, and provide inspiration. And there's a lot of energy coming through of faith. So there's an overarching kind of arc here, our um, aura of faith, which doesn't have to do with religion. It has to do with how you practice being a human, <laughs> how you integrate the energetics of spirit and the support structures you have, whether they be angels or spirit guides or ascended masters or totem animals or loved ones in the afterlife, whether that be your dog or your sister in the afterlife. You have support. You are held while you are in a human body trying to live the best that you can, trying to figure out this craziness of the mind and express through your body and be your fullest self as a spiritual person as well. Very intuitive, very in tune and living your life. So, all right, my friends, that's that. Make sure that if you are in a place where you have contemplated or had suicidal ideation that you reach out for help to friends, to family. I promise you people are not tired of listening to you. And if they are, they're the wrong people in general. It's not because you're too much or you're a pain in the ass. It's because that's the wrong person. Sometimes it helps to talk to somebody anonymously. It, it can. So there are 1-800 crisis lines and talk lines and depending upon what community or group that you belong to in society, you could go to a church, you could go um, if you're part of the LGBTQ plus community, um, IA community, you could go to the Trevor Project, for example. There's a lot of support for you, a lot. All it takes is a simple Google search. Okay, all right. 
All right, let's do a nice deep breath in and connect with the heart chakra and just feel some peaceful energy in the heart space. Okay, let's do that. Nice deep breath in. And exhale out. Part of the goal, as always here on Above Life Channel, is to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope. And today, this is a very real conversation about life, the choices we make, and understanding ourselves a bit better. And I think that the primary message is to have more compassion with ourselves and show up for ourselves, to listen to our inner voice, not just your brain, because your brain is impulsive and it will make choices spontaneously that your body has to live with or not, or to die with for the rest of your family, your friends, your existence, that what could have been life on earth. I'm not judging at this state, at this place at all, any way, shape or form, I am just offering to you a sacred healing container for you to, to really alchemize some of this energy that is present here. Because let's be true, okay? You and I, let's be true right now. The energy of the, the COVID and the coronavirus and the economy and the family dynamic shit, that's messed up right now. I mean, it's, crazy and the expectation of just magically flipping the switch and showing back up in society like the old person you were before COVID happened is not realistic and it ain't working for anybody. People that think that act like it's working for them, it's because they've been doing a lot of self-work and getting a lot of support, whether through medication, through natural homeopathy means, whether through counseling and therapy, whether through support groups, 12-step programs, or uh, life coaches, chiropractors, doctors, However that looks, people are getting support and you deserve that. Now is the time to be resourceful and use the resources that are available to you. Free ones like your church group or at your college or university or school or at your employer with your employee assistance programs. Oftentimes programs, there are programs through employers that will offer free, co free counseling like four or six times, et cetera. Resource what you have available because it's there. There's no excuse to just jump ship and get out of here. We need you. We need you here and we need you present. So stay. Stay. At least give it another. Maybe five words. And stay. You're worth it. I know you're worth it. Thanks for watching. I look forward to connecting with you on social media, on Bridget Inspired on Instagram, Bridget Inspired on Facebook, and Fairy Grasshopper, my other YouTube channel. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sticking around. Thank you for staying. Thank you.